House of Glory wrestling fans. I am longtime independent wrestling fan Robert Plata O Plomo. Say that three times fast. Was one awesome show House of Glory had put on, and I'd say even though I missed the first two shows this year, this may have been their best effort effort so far this year out of all the shows they've done. Okay. Now, as, you know, by the way, they, they said it was supposed to start 7.30 p.m., but it didn't start till 8 o'clock, you know. 7.30, my ass. But then again, only in indie wrestling, as Sean McCaffrey used to say. But, there was like so many great rock songs played before the show, and after all that, then they played Neil Diamond's Sweet Caroline, and when it came to the chorus part, they cut the volume off, and and right on cue, the crowd was, you know, bum, bum, bum. <laughs> I was hoping they would have played some Metallica before the show started. They played Bon Jovi, they played Saliva's Click, Click, Boom, and so many other good stuff. And also, David Adams, multiple announcements, it's like almost every few minutes about the, the, the meet and greets to the crowd coming in. And I know there were so many, I mean, there were so many. This was by the, one of the biggest House of Glory crowds ever, I gotta say. I mean, there were so many people having a stand. And I don't know, House of Glory, tell me. I mean, look, there was, I mean, I felt, you know, like, with all the body heat in there, we knew it would get warm. And I did feel a breeze as the show went on, but that might have been because the door was open. But tell me, does this building have air conditioning? You know, it's the third month in a row and it felt warm in there. I mean, my goodness, this is not going to be acceptable to everyone. Not everybody's going to want to sweat and swelter. Okay, um, but it was uh, on with the show, and we kicked off with a with Impact Wrestling's Speedball Mike Bailey as he took on the Ghetto Samurai Nolo Katano, with accompanied by the two Aki. Uh, I apologize, I already forgot what he calls those two ninjas that are co accompany him at ringside. Now, this, I mean, I even said, you know insert martial arts reference every martial arts reference here <laughs> wow wow oh. mother uh. <sighs> wow still blown away by this show folks yeah, but the, uh, they had a very good matchup, and uh, there was, like, interference by Kitano's guys, and I think even the referee ejected him from ringside. They didn't leave right away. Eventually, um, I forgot what kind of little bottle that one of them carried to ringside, and um, Kitano spit it eventually. Actually, tried to spit in uh, Mike Bailey's face, but he got into the eyes of one of the ninjas. And I forget how, um, well, actually, I know how it ended. Uh, Katano hit that move. It looks like, it's like I said, I call it the pedigree meets the playmaker. Which is, you know, Triple H's pedigree meets the playmaker, which I remember MVP using that finisher and also Elix Skipper. He used a, a move, Elix Skipper, he called it like the play of the day. And uh, Nolo Katano was victorious in this matchup. Next up was a three-way tag team match as we saw Mike, Michael, Michael Fane and Blackman, the Black Hand, versus the Cashflow, Cashflow Inc., Cash, uh, Ken Broadway, the Self-Made Savage, and the Entertainer, or the, the Blast, the Something Entertainer, I forgot what he called, Encore. And, they all, and, the, and the, trip, the other team was uh, Eden and Osito. Uh, one point in the matchup... Uh, as the match was going on, Elvis Crespo's Suavemente starts playing, and there was a everybody was in the ring dancing, including referee Nick Shin. <laughs> no, I don't know the words of that one, folks. Eventually, uh, the Cash Flow Inc. got the victory 
when uh, Eden or was it Osito got pinned, and then all six men they're all gathering around doing that primetime players millions of dollars millions of dollars dance. <laughs> Interesting. So the duo of cash flowing continues their winning ways, even though this is only the second time they've teamed teamed up. Up next, out comes the women's champion, Ultraviolet, with the Bookers, Amazing Red and Brian XL, but I think they left ringside after she came in the ring. She took the microphone, and she said she had issued an open challenge, and she hand-picked her open, her challenger, and it was Kamar? I apologize if I got her name wrong. Uh, Violet hit some, I forgot what move she hit, and we figured it was over, but she pulled pulled her Kamar, again, I apologize, I got her name wrong, and put her like in a submission. I thought it was the Koji Clutch eh, that the Fallen Angel Christopher Daniels was known for, but it was invented by New Japan Pro Wrestling star Koji Kanemoto. Great wrestler. Mm. And after the match, Violet gets the microphone again, and she wanted a Sam Laterna from the House of Glory announced team to come in the ring and interview her. And Violet mentioned that Sam Laterna used to wrestle and I don't know if she got injured or why she stopped or couldn't handle the, handle being a wrestler. I don't know what the, the truth is, folks. And I forgot what happened, but out comes Kiki Van Gogh from the, uh, the Black Hand. And I forgot what she, Kiki said to Violet. But then it's the, the Bookers, Red, Amazing Red and Brian XL come out. And and then all of a sudden they were going to have their tag title match. And he said, you know, these guys, even they mentioned that these guys, they were beaten before. And out came the Jabronis, one and two, who came to the ring to Lincoln Park's crawling. Who doesn't like Lincoln Park? But... Before anything can happen, out comes Commissioner James Solomon, and he tells tells the bookers, you know, I told you I was going to name your opponents. I mean, you guys, and, and not surprising, it turned out to be ring ringleader Midas and Jay Lyons, the main of main event, who the bookers dethroned back in February, I think was the date, or was it in March? February or March? I forgot which which show that was when Red and Brian won the tag belts. And main event in Red and Brian Brawl, eventually uh, the, uh, the, I guess, wrestlers are training. They come out to try to break it up, but then out comes Cashflow Wink, the Black Hand, Eden and Osito. They come out to break it up. And then Solomon announces to the crowd, tells the bookers, you know, you're, you are going to defend those tag, give main event their tag title, tag title shot. And he announced it would be happening on Friday night, August 18th. As House of Glory presents high intensity as the main event will challenge the bookers, Brian XL and the Amazing Red, for the tag team championship within the confines of a steel cage. Which really got the crowd going after that. Alright. After all that chaos settled down, we had our next matchup, which saw a uh, mighty Montequia take on Re recently newly crowned Impact World Heavyweight Champion Alex Shelley for the Motor City Machine Guns. Good match these guys had. Um, at one point, Ghetto Samurai Nolo Katano came out and this, I forgot what, eventually, uh, yeah, um, Katano spit, spit, whatever that drink, I don't know what that is, he drank spit that stuff in Monte's face and then Shelly puts the Border City stretch on him and and the referee uh, called for the bell and Alex Shelly was victorious so it looks like Katano and Monte's problems are yet to be resolved and then up on the screen you know, it, I guess it was announcement time and they announced that it would be New Japan Pro Wrestling's Ace Hiroshi Tanahashi will be making his House of Glory debut Friday night, August 18th at High Intensity. And 
I know my fellow NYWCite Sam Katz, who was in attendance for this show, you know, he obviously had himself a fucking cream fest because he loves New Japan Pro Wrestling, but yet he doesn't want to educate himself about New Japan Pro Wrestling's past. That newbie. At that point, they thankfully did go to intermission. And good thing, too, because I had to use the bathroom. And I gotta say, that men's bathroom is, like, very not very spacey at all. I mean, it's like, too bad there's no, they should, too bad that the, 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 the property owners don't want to put, like, little walls between those urinals. I mean, that's a thing about, about me. I mean, no matter what I gotta, when, when I gotta use the bathroom, I, I'm not gonna use a urinal. I don't want to use a, a, a urinal in a bathroom, because, you know, and, and another thing, and this is like a pet peeve I have, whenever I go to a public, inside of a public, if I have to use a public bathroom, let me say this. <sighs> As far as public bathrooms goes, I don't whether it's a five-year-old, whether it's a five-year-old child, or an elderly eighty-five-year-old man, should lift the damn toilet seat before you use it. Unless you gotta sit on the bowl, all right. But come on, whether you're a five-year-old or an eighty-five-year-old, lift the toilet seat unless you gotta sit on it, unless you need to sit on the bowl. Oh, man. Sorry to go off track with the show, folks. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. Up next was a six-way matchup for the Cruiserweight Championship as Darren Richards or Richardson versus Raheem Royal versus Ben Rutten versus uh, two, uh, making his hog debut Diego El Trabajador I apologize if I mispronounced that and got it wrong versus another hog debut Jay Bougie, he's been getting quite a buzz on, in the indie circuit versus Sweet Cheeks Joey Silver you know, the people that were chanting sweet cheeks in the crowd, I don't think any of them were women. <laughs> Mostly guys. <laughs> well, well, these six, you know, this was enjoyable. I forgot how, but uh, Joey Silver hit some kind of mood on, on Jay Bougie and pinned him to retain the uh, Cruiserweight Championship. But, of course... Joey only won the belt last month. Up next was a match for the Crown Jewel Championship as El Io del Vikingo challenged the root of all evil Charles Mason for the Crown Jewel Championship. Uh, very good, very good contest. Um, wow. Uh, at one point, Mason ordered two of the two of the guys at ringside to, you know. Take the take the turnbuckle to loosen the turnbuckle, or try to take the top rope down, and eventually Charles brought in a chair. And I don't know if he did use it on Vikingo, or he was about to, and the referee called for the bell. And I guess it was a no contest, or Mason was DQ'd. But then out comes Commissioner Sol uh, Jason Sullivan, and announces to, announces to Mason that you know you're not going to be able to do this on on August 18th at high intensity because you got a no holds barred match against this man. And up on the screen it was announced. It was a man who has been to House of Glory in the past. Not sure if he still goes by this nickname. The last of a dying breed, Eddie Kingston. Yes, folks. Eddie Kingston, one-on-one -on -one with the Rude Ball Evil Charles Mason. Friday night, August 18th at high intensity. And then it was time for the main event. As we saw Carlito challenge... The indie god Matt Cardona, accompanied the ring by Staff De Staff, De Staff Delander, for the uh, House of Glory Heavyweight Championship, and even as they, they were parading around the ring, some of these fans, they were throwing stuff at them. They this one dude who was in the front row, two seats ahead of me, wearing a New Day shirt. Not only was he throwing stuff, and at one part Cardona owned that owned that motherfucker by pushing him down. And if that wasn't bad enough, that skunk, that motherfucker was vaping throughout the show. 
I'll get back to vaping lit in a little bit. But you know, the match was ooh, the match was on, and uh, ooh. the um, quite the finish. Uh, Carlito uh, he accidentally closed on referee Nick Shin. Steph Delander came in the ring. Uh, uh, Cardona. Did I say Cardona? Yes. Cardona got a hold of the apple. He starts eating, starts chewing, chewing it up. He went to spit in Carlito's face, but it got in Steph Delander's face. Carlito hits the back cracker, lung blower, uh, code breaker. Not sure what other names have been given to that particular move. And try to he, Carlito got on top for some got got on top. Out comes referee Giuseppe. Giuseppe, Giuseppe, and he makes a three count, and and it was announced that Carlito was the new champion. But referee Nick Shin comes out, and he says, "No, no, no." He disqualified Carlito for clotheslining him, and one and Carduna had retained by disqualification, retaining the championship. And all these fans that were throwing stuff at him, and you know, I mean, I'm going to say it right now, to all the fans that were throwing. Th all the fans that were throwing stuff at Matt Cardona, you're giving all wrestling fans a bad name. This fans a bad name, and you know, and I'm gonna say it right now. You can come after me. You can say whatever you want. But you, those of you who are throwing stuff, you people are fucking pigs. Makes me wonder: is that how you treat your home? And while and while I'm at it. As far as, you know, back to what I said about, about vaping. I mean, come on. That shouldn't be allowed in the building. I mean, can't smoke cigarettes in the building or any uh, cigarettes. I mean, what's going to be next? People do, allowed to do hookah in the, in the building? It's ridiculous. You know, this could, I mean, that shit could, it's, you know, might rub people the wrong way. And, you know, people might not want to go to House of Glory if they want to go for the first time. All right, but I think something needs to be done about that, and maybe even have have some some uh, some some extra security, especially with these fans throwing stuff at Cardona or maybe throwing stuff at somebody else. I think he was might have thrown some stuff at Charles Mason. Uh, but this is terrible. Hmm. Okay, now it's time for the personal notes. It was a nice sitting by Ariana, Chrissy, and Ariana's nephew, Francisco, or is it Frankie? Uh, two, also nice seeing two of my fellow NYWCites in attendance, uh, Tommy and Sam. And as I said, Sam, I'm sure you creamed your pants, figuratively speaking, on the announcement of Hiroshi Tanahashi. There was one memorable quote. <laughs> Fuck women, Francisco, during the uh, women's title match, and and I did say, you know, you know, we all want, we we all we all want to, but not all of them are going going to let us do it. And the crowd of a chatting, they were chatting. We want Chelsea, which is Matt Cardona's wife. Come on. You, like you fucking perverts would have a fucking chance, even if you, even if Chelsea wasn't married to Cardona. All that thought, folks. As mentioned earlier, House of Glory returns. Well, they they have two shows coming up. One was not plugged throughout the show by ringing out to David Adams. They're going to have a student show showcase Friday night, June thirtieth, which I will not be attending, and. They return with High Intensity, which is like one of their biggest shows of the year, or maybe their big one for the year, on Friday night, August 18th. As mentioned earlier, already announced, uh, the Bookers, Brian XL and the Amazing Red, defend the Tag Team Championship against Main Event in a Steel Cage match. Uh, 
the last of a dying breed, Eddie Kingston takes on the root of all evil, Charles Mason, in a no holds barred match. I don't know if the Crown Jewel Championship is going to be on the line. And also appearing will be, I don't know if he'll be in action or not, uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling star Hiroshi Tanahashi. All right, now, I couldn't believe this. During intermission, I, I checked the HOG website, and believe it or not, folks, the tickets are already on sale. I just couldn't believe. I don't even get a good look here. Hold it, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Hold it, folks. Okay. I don't know if you can really see. I mean, this is it. But look at the, these prices are like so... Oh, my goodness. I mean, $200, $200 for VIP... $150 a front row, $100 second row. Oh, wow. Damn. Uh, I mean, my goodness. I mean, like, general, general mission is, uh, it's 30 bucks, but my God. Third row is 80 bucks, fourth row, 60 bucks. And then General Mission is only 30. Right. Now, I understand all these these wrestlers, great, you know, top-notch wrestlers aren't going to come cheap. I mean, I don't know. I don't, I'm sorry, House of Glory, but maybe you want to... I keep wondering, where is the money coming from? Forget all, all of this. Oh, oh by the way, uh, <laughs> this thing right here where it's given out nearly every show... Well, whoever wrote this, they forgot to add the words as fuck to it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, once again, uh, you know, ooh. Uh, you know, that, great being being near Ariana. And uh, Ariana, we should have taken a picture before before everybody started leaving. Uh, 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 oh yeah, I'm sorry. Ariana, I guess I, I, I made, made you laugh a few times uh, throughout the show. But as far as, you know, I'm sorry to go off track here, but as far as those damn ticket prices, I'm going to say all the newbies, as my longtime friend Randy Corelli would say, as well as all the rich bastards out there, you know, you could have those $200 tickets, 150 front row tickets. Like, come on. I'm not paying that money. I mean, come on. Do any wrestling fans want to fucking go broke? I mean, just about everybody's got bills to pay and and such and pay their rent. I mean, I don't know how everybody's doing it. Of course, if people didn't have jobs, they wouldn't be able, wouldn't have money to do it. My goodness. Oh, and another thing, Matt Cardona also, like, I think another fan actually threw, threw his drink, drink at uh, Matt Cardona before he entered the ring for his match. I mean, just, just getting outright obnoxious and... You know, Ariana, I'm glad to see you did agree with me about that one dude that was two seats in front of a, and, and two seats in front of me that was, you know, throwing stuff at Cardona, was vaping throughout the night. You know, something's got to be done about that shit. I still I said it earlier, but I got to say it again. Um... Wow. <sighs> really got to... Well, actually, oh. We already got... Okay, the matches we already know for the next event. Uh, I, I'd like to see for August 18th of uh, Ultraviolet defend the Women's Championship against Kiki Van Gogh. And... Oh, I'd like to see the Ghetto Samurai Nolo Katano one-on-one -on -one with uh, Mighty Mante. 
Or was it Montequilla? I keep forgetting. Mighty Montequilla, Mighty Monte. <laughs> in any event, whew, this this was one out. This, this was one of those shows that would blow other show other other shows they've done out of the water. And you know, even as I I was coming to the building, I was I was thinking this better be worth it. And oh boy. Oh, I forgot to mention. <laughs> uh, I, I did notice a, a particular grade A ham in the building. A guy who says he's too old school for Facebook, but but he had but had Twitter for a time. That guy needs to get out of his caveman menta mentality. And I noticed a few. And I know it's two two jerks in attendance as well. <sighs> oh, oh, another memorable quote, or or actually, it was a chat. Fuck you, Violet. Fuck you. The crowd, which, and I'm sure most of these guys are all a bunch of fucking perverts who wouldn't have a chance with with her towards Ultraviolet during her match. <sighs> wow. This was one heck of a show. And I'm glad I was there. And oh, and for the second month in a row, House of Glory ran past 11 o'clock. Eh. Good thing. I mean, if the place wasn't, you know, if they, if they weren't doing their shows... 20 minutes away from where I live. I don't know if I'd be able to pull it off. Especially when they run on Fridays. You know, when I gotta work and all. So, folks, I hope you enjoyed this review. And uh, hope to meet some House of Glory fans in the future. And, you know, even if it's just the good looking ladies in the crowd. I don't end up. When I, I, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but during intermission, I had to go use the bathroom. Uh, Brian XL noticed me. He said, hey, what's up, buddy? So, Brian, I'm sure you're thrilled I made the show. <laughs> don't know if you watch my videos or not, or if Red watches any of them. Ugh. But, Plata o Plomo. <laughs> this was great. <laughs>